Hi there, Matt Cawthorn, Extra Hop Networks here. We're going to talk today about Nagel delays. This guy right here on the send side, on the outbound side. Uh, and what it is, we're going to walk, that's main, the main point here is to sort of walk through what the definition of a Nagel delay is, at least in our terms at Extra Hop. Because it's not just the presence of the algorithm, this is actually um, represented as the deadlock or the sort of bad interplay between delayed acknowledgments and Nagel's algorithm. And we'll show you exactly what we mean by that. So this is uh, this is actually something that's pretty interesting and unique to us, where we're actually replicating the TCP state engine in real time uh, for each flow through the box, client and server side. And this Nagel delay is, in fact, uh, representative of the bad interplay, as I mentioned before. And I'll show you what we mean. So anyways, this is where you find it. I'm looking here at the activity group for TCP. You could find this in the TCP details on the extra hop system for an individual host. You can drill down on who's suffering from the Nagel delays, both um, on the remote side as well as which servers are sending them. Uh, this is very common in full proxy application delivery controller world, by the way. So those application delivery, there are several in the space who have a full proxy. And in fact, Nagel's algorithm is enabled by default on, at least to my knowledge, all of those systems. And the reason why is that's a sensible default. Certain traffic types are not conducive to Nagel's algorithm. It's usually a checkbox fix on a capable application delivery controller. And uh, so yeah, so we'll talk a little bit about that. So we're going to jump right back into the virtual blackboard here. Now, and I'm going to draw out a couple of things. The first thing I'm going to sort of really quickly talk about here is Actually, you know what? I'm going to pause and we're going to pull up an article here and look at that first. I will be right back as soon as I pause. And I'm back. Okay, I pulled up Wikipedia for Nagel's algorithm. I would encourage you to do so as well. We're going to look at this. Here's the algorithm. Okay, now notice down here it's kind of off the screen, but it uh, interacts badly with TCP delayed acknowledgments. Lo and behold, this is what we're talking about today. Um, and there's a link down at the bottom of this Wikipedia. I definitely think it's worth reading. There's a link down at the bottom of this Wikipedia page that, that points to a discussion by John Nagel himself uh, on one of the forums out there. I forget which one. But it's about the, the interplay and things. There's another one by a gentleman by the name of Stuart Cheshire, uh, which I would look up as well. So if you Google Stuart Cheshire Nagel Delayed Act, you will get his excellent, excellent case study on how this thing can bring itself to bear on your application delivery. Okay, now, it seems arcane and esoteric. It's not necessarily so. Here's the algorithm. In, in short, if there's new data to send, and you know, it, you know, if it's smaller than a, a maximum segment size, um, or sorry, if it's larger than the maximum segment size, send the data now. Okay, simple. So if you've got it, if you've got a full segment, send it. That's the, that's the moral of the story. Now, otherwise, other, and here's the rub. If you have unconfirmed, i.e. unacknowledged, data still in the pipe, as you know, TCP, I can have multiple outstanding segments, unacknowledged segments in flight at any given time, depending on what the window sizes are and things like that. Okay, now, so I can have multiple outstanding uh, segments in flight. Now, if it is, and I have it, if it's smaller than the maximum segment size, and queue the data buffer, basically. Stall. Okay, now Nagel's algorithm, I don't I want to be clear, it's not a bad thing in and of itself. It's very, very well intended. As it turns out, at around the same time in the story of the, the saga of TCP, uh, about the same time, delayed acknowledgments came out. All right, so we're going to look at delayed acts a little bit here. Now, so delayed acknowledgments are basically, I, I will be very, very simplistic. So the academics out there, um, you know, feel free and write chide me for this later on, but so basically at the send side, and this is the receive side, Stephen's diagram, if I send a segment, what delayed acts, delayed acts are doing, and Nagel says this himself in that article, is that it's essentially a bet that the operating system, the stack is making, saying, you know what, I'm not going to acknowledge this segment right away. What you would expect, just sort of intuitively, is that I would act this segment right away. But a bare acknowledgment, as they call it, a bare acknowledgment doesn't carry any data. It's just a blank segment. You could conceivably stuff some data into that segment. And in fact, that's what the goal is here, okay? The idea here is to actually fill this segment, maybe not fill it, but send some payload data back 
with this acknowledgement. Now, here's the trick though. You don't know necessarily, depending on the service, you don't know if he's actually got any data to send with the acknowledgement. And what we're doing here is that we're making sort of a blind assumption that in fact, most of the time, which is kind of true, most of the time there's some data to send with an acknowledgement, therefore wait for data. And in fact, this timer, this delayed act timer can be up to 500 or so milliseconds depending on the operating system. And the good news is, is that this is timeable. It's well, uh, it's timeable in Windows for sure, or tunable, I should say, in Windows for sure. So, uh, and you know, I'm not sure about Linux. I need to check on that. So um, if someone knows out there, please let me know and let's show me the proc uh, line to tickle so we can, so we can uh, publicize that. But suffice to say, this is what delayed acknowledgements are doing, okay? So they're stalling, waiting for data to send so they don't send bare acts. Those are sort of superfluous segments on the wire, at least in theory. Now, let's go back to the algorithm and let's just look. Now that we know what delayed acknowledgements are doing, let's think about it. Delayed acknowledgements are waiting for data to send. Their operative word there is waiting. Likewise, nagle on the send side. So nagling would be on the send side. So the send side, he's waiting for an acknowledgement right here. So they're uncondated, if unconfirmed data is still in the pipe. So nagle is waiting for the acknowledgement and the acknowledgement is waiting for data. Both are sitting around waiting. And in fact, on the extra hop system, we do full stream reassembly up to 10 gigabits a second, layer two through seven, that includes TCP. We in fact are showing you here, Nick, sorry, let me move over a little bit, Nagel delays, okay? These are a manifestation of the bad interplay between delayed acknowledgements and Nagel's algorithm. Okay, so just going back to the blackboard here, a Nagel delay, let's, uh, I'm gonna get rid of this guy if I, can do it, yes, okay. So I'm gonna get rid of this guy. Now, so Nagel, so this guy's now waiting to send data for some period of time. Nagel is waiting because it's, it's unacknowledged data, so he's waiting as well to send more because let's say his data gram is less than the MS, sorry, less than the MSS. And so you can see here how these two algorithms actually don't particularly work well together. Now. Um, what will happen is, you know, this will finally time out and we'll get some data flow, but the graph in Cheshire's article looks kind of like this, 200 milliseconds, and then the throughput goes up, another 200 millisecond plateau, then it just sort of crawls up. When he disables Nagel, the throughput is like this, kind of straight up. No, these little stalls are 200 milliseconds in his case. And that was on uh, the, the OS X stack, if I recall. Okay. Now, 200 milliseconds here. So these, this was the effective throughput here is terrible over time, over segments and things like that. So big deal. This is a big deal. Now let's talk about what to do about the big deal, okay? And typically, and I'm not going to say all the time, now typically what we see out there in the field um, is very, very common is that you will see in the, app, in the application delivery controller space, smart load balancers for some folks, um, what we'll see is Nagel's algorithm enabled by default, and even though the servers back here in blue have it, uh, the actual runtime process actually sets TCP underscore no delay in the socket options. In other words, they're disabling Nagel's algorithm. The actual load balancer, because it's a full proxy, is actually buffering here and assuming Nagel's algorithm does in fact, out the front side, does in fact apply. This is a checkbox fix, okay? So that's the great news here, but it'll, it'll play games with you, especially with Microsoft RPC, um, Exchange 2010, web services, SOAP XML, and in fact, even web traffic itself, the Apache binary has TCP no delay enabled. In other words, they have the Nagel's algorithm the Nagel's <laughs> disabled. So they have Nagel's algorithm disabled because web traffic, a lot of it is kind of small and chatty and things like that. And you want it to be delivered as quickly as possible. Another obvious use case here are, is any sort of latency. Again, the, the, the operative word here is latency as opposed to throughput because Nagel's can help maximize throughput and efficiency. But latency sensitive applications with small data, okay? Notice by the way too, we call out what we call tiny grams, and these are 
segments that are smaller than the MSS here, okay, on the send side, smaller than the maximum segment size at layer four, okay. Well, we, we should probably wrap now. This is a big subject, and I hope that that was useful. If not, fire some questions out to the forums, forum.extrahop.com, and we'll get them answered for you. Thanks very much.